NIST is the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and they were selected for the task of developing the NIST framework because they are a non-regulatory federal agency. They act as an unbiased source of scientific data, including cybersecurity practices. The framework was the result of a US executive order in 2013. By 2014 it was adopted globally, partly due to organizations having a US headquarters and being US owned. Organizations such as Google, Amazon, PayPal and Morgan Stanley were the early adopters. In August 2017 the UK government published the first version of the NIS Directive to guide suppliers of essential services to the critical national infrastructure. As you will see in later slides, this directive is closely aligned to the NIST Cyber Security Framework, and in June 2018 the UK government published their minimum cyber security standard. This standard is also closely aligned to the NIST framework. The remit of your security function is constantly changing and expanding. Organizing your security operations into the NIST framework helps to introduce a workflow in order to assign activities to teams or individuals. The framework itself is made up of five functions, identify, protect, detect, respond and recover. The functions are further broken down into 23 categories, and underneath those categories are 108 subcategories. As you can see, the identify function is a typical starting point for the security process. Asset management is a vital category under this function. Visibility of all your assets is critical. If you don't know something is there, you can't possibly protect it. Visibility includes knowing your users, the applications they use, and the devices on which they run them as well as your network infrastructure. The protect function covers traditional defensive technology such as antivirus and firewalls, but also addresses processes, policies, and awareness. Once identified and protected, your assets need to be monitored to detect incursions against your defenses. Should you detect an incident, the respond function defines what activities take place to process and respond to that incident. Finally, the recover function describes the processes for restoration of services, recovery of damaged or missing assets, and includes any disaster recovery plans.